Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be exploring what someone, as a maker slash hobbyist, could salvage from old, dead computer parts. Something that you probably don't know about me is that I've been an electronics hobbyist since before I got into computers years ago. I like to design and build my own circuits to do things, and reusing old components that I can salvage from old appliances is a key part of what I do. Therefore, I want to show you some of the things that I like to salvage from these old computer parts here. A motherboard, DVD drive, and some power supplies. One quick disclaimer here, desoldering components from boards is an inherently risky task. You could run into charge capacitors and most certainly unhealthy fumes from the solder. Make sure that you're fully trusting in yourself to take on these risks and deal with them properly, especially the fumes. Luckily for me, I have the Fume Mover 9000, which is perfect for this job, minus the fact that it ruins the audio. I'm going to start with the DVD drive, as it's the easiest thing to begin with because it doesn't require any immediate desoldering. After opening the drive, there are several things that become immediately noticeable that could be useful in projects. I'll first start by removing the drive's main board to expose the rest of the drive's components that we'll try to salvage. There's pretty much nothing on the drive main board that is worthwhile saving, so that can be sold for scrap metal. There are multiple motors in these drives, one of which is a main interest here. Popping open the drive tray to enable the removal of the drive's main mechanism is helpful here. This little board is held in with a few clips and has a regular brushed DC motor that can be very useful for certain things, definitely worth saving. The motor that spins the disc isn't too much of interest to me, as it's a brushless DC motor that requires a controller to use and it's impossible to separate from the case specific bracket that's built into it for the drive. More scrap metal. Generally, I also recycle this little worm gear motor, but while writing this script I've decided that I may try to build a little driver circuit for it just to give it a shot. Let me know if any of you would be interested in a video on that. Moving on, the next and final parts of interest here are the 3mm stainless steel rod that the laser head slides on, as well as the laser head itself. The rod is useful for projects as an axle or a structural pin, and the laser has some nice little neodymium magnets in it that can be useful for other projects that use Huddle Effect sensors or reed switches. Next comes probably my favorite PC part to scrap, power supplies. Now, as this process obviously involves opening power supplies and messing around with their boards, it's important to make sure that you are fully confident in the fact that the PSU's capacitors are discharged, as well as your skill set when it comes to working around possibly high voltage devices. I've been doing this for years now, so I trust myself fully when it comes to these and this one's been sitting around for over three weeks now since it was last plugged into the wall. If you have any smidgen of doubt about your ability to do this safely, I'll strongly advise you against doing this. Here I tested the two big caps, noticed that one's bulging and dying, and both read zero volts no matter what combination of terminals I tested, so this board is entirely dead and there is no reason for me to treat it like it's live anymore. This is obviously slightly against best practices, and is a risk that I take, but considering the fact that the part of the board that is truly capable of supplying harmful shocks is dead, I'm personally okay with this. The first thing that I do is desolder the big capacitors to open space in the board to work around, and to save them if they're good still. One of these capacitors looks fine, I'll test it sometime later, but it doesn't noticeably bulge whatsoever. The other one, however, is most definitely bulging and might have been the reason that this power supply wouldn't reliably work. Maybe that could have been a fix, but it's a really cheap feeling and looking power supply, so it's not a big deal to me. There are only a few things I generally salvage here, just because a lot of the components on these boards can be found for very cheap online. The things that I do salvage consist of mainly odd value slash shape capacitors, as those can be uncommon and useful to have on hand, heat sinks and the components attached to them, and useful looking inductors as those can get pricey at times. This is what the board looked like after I was done desoldering what I wanted from it. I'll go through everything that I got at the end as well as show a screenshot of each individual component part number and what it is. I did this same thing for the other power supply board that I had on hand as well. Once the boards from the power supplies were successfully scraped of useful components, I could finish off the power supplies by taking care of the casings with parts mounted to them. I always take the fans out of these and keep them in my fan drawer in case I need a power supply fan replacement, and I usually try to salvage these AC sockets for whatever project might benefit from one down the line. Be careful with how much heat you put into these when desoldering the wire ends from the connectors, as you may do what I accidentally did here and melt the plastic around the pin, in turn practically ruining the socket. You could melt it back into place, but it'll never quite be the same and you wouldn't want that to cause any shoddy contacts that could spark. I also usually try to salvage these little rocker switches from the power supplies that have them, but this one in particular felt like it was partially broken, so I let it go. 
Lastly, it's time for the motherboard. This is arguably the most disappointing part to scrap for components. It might seem like it would be great because it's got so many components, but unless you have very specific SMD components you want, you're probably not going to find anything of much interest on here. I like to pull off the VRM cooler heatsinks and sell those as scrap metal separately to bring in a little bit more cash, so I detached this one from the board and set it aside. The only things left on this board that were worthwhile for me to salvage are sometimes the capacitors, a few of the inductors, and the CR2032 coin battery socket. This board didn't have any interesting capacitor values, so I didn't invest much time into the caps at all. There was one inductor of interest to me that I desoldered, and it could come in handy at some time in the future. Now, the only thing that remained on the board that was also worth my time to desolder was the coin battery socket. This is arguably the most useful part that one can pull from these motherboards in case any project needs a coin battery. These coin battery holders are especially good for usage in circuits that use an RTC chip to keep the time, for example. Let's talk about the haul from these components now. For such a small lot of parts, it could be a lot worse, and is worthwhile for me to do as some of these parts can be somewhat expensive brand new. I got a total of three high voltage filter caps, one 470 microfarad 200 volt one, and two 680 microfarad 220 volt ones. The two 80 millimeter fans that felt like they had good bearings were also acquired. Only two inductors stood out as useful to me, and they were these two. One AC socket, two thin and wimpy heat sinks, two thick and beefy heat sinks, one 3mm rod, two small neodymium magnets, a brush DC motor that I forgot to desolder, and a whole bunch of components that were mounted to the heat sinks. I have a chart with the model numbers and what the components are at the end screen. I also got one coin battery socket from the motherboard. As for what's left after all this is done, I have a few stripped power supply boards, a DVD drive board, and a motherboard that's mostly like it was before. Also, a lot of scrap steel that I can give to a recycler to hopefully recycle in one way or another. That's all that I have for this video. I hope that you guys were able to enjoy it and maybe even learn something. I hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.